Hey everyone. Uh, this is really cool. I had no idea it was going to be this big. It seems the entire island is here. And <laughs> you both came. Um, and it's really awesome to see the B-side organizers here putting on so many talks about um, like health and well-being in the industry because we're really bad at it. Um, and that's never affected anyone's life. So, layer, layer two person spoofing and imposter syndrome. Who am I? I'm a security engineer at Stripe. We do payments. We named after MagStripes, if you remember those, because PayWave has been here for a while now, and we still have MagStripes. Uh, I used to be at Etsy, so I know a lot about knitting. I uh, used to be at Puppet Labs, so I'm probably responsible for your infrastructure breaking. Uh, and I'm a two-time sponsor of Wrong Island Con, if anyone's been to Wrong Island Con. Um, yeah. Exactly, yeah. By sponsor, I mean I paid and didn't go. Um, I know how to pronounce router because uh, I've lived in this hemisphere, so we can, um, I'm enjoying the latency of every connection. I'm, in, yeah. Um, and my Instagram has been stuck advertising New Zealand things for the past three or four months. I think because I tried to VPN to New Zealand so I could try and get Google navigation settings to be in New Zealand or Kiwi. No, that's the same, Australian or Kiwi. And then Instagram went, oh, you live there. Let's do all your adverts in this now. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, to get everyone on board, this is a fact. <laughs> and this is where I lose the crowd, because that's actually better than both. So, uh, it's like, it's New Zealand Marmite, it's delicious. It's too sweet and too toffee-like for me. So, you know, but English Marmite is gross and just goes ick. And, and I do buy them in the two and a half kilo tubs, because I have a problem. But currently, that's in storage. Um, but first, before this train wreck of a ride goes, um, there's a trigger warning, because um, being responsible. I don't know if this show made it here, but that's still my favorite joke. Um, this, this talk is about vulnerabilities, and I don't know if anyone in the security industry has heard of vulnerabilities. Um, I haven't seen any talks on them or anyone mentioning them. Um, but vulnerabilities are... Um, the quali quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally, and then some examples, whatever. Emotionally, uh, emotional vulnerabilities and emotional vulnerabilities is never talked about in the entire InfoSec world um, because you're not allowed to have them. Um, but other vulnerabilities you must talk about because that way you prove your call. Uh, this talk is not about that. If you are looking for zero day, you need to be in a different room. Um, and finding an old picture of root shell was really fun. Um, and shows how old I am. Um, yeah, I don't have any RFC 4861 O'Day. Uh, if anyone knows what that RFC is, you should get out more. Um, so imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> Vincent Adultman is the best character ever. Um, it's, it's when high-achieving individuals are marked by their in inability to internalize that they're good at anything or that, like, they did this thing, but yeah, anyone could do this thing, or I'm gonna get found out that I actually don't know as much as my teammates, or somehow I've uh, passed an interview that has worked successfully in this company for the past six years, but somehow I slipped through. Um, no idea what that would be like. Um, and like, am I even qualified to um, give this talk? And this happens a lot. I've, I even turned down, someone asked me to go and speak about this in a conference, and I turned it down because I didn't feel like I could talk about it. And I've spent the last few months going, I'm not sure I can talk about this anymore. And yeah, you, you see how neurosis builds. Um, and there's a the theory that like, everyone has this. Not everyone is the most confident, um, outgoing, sure of themselves person in the world. Um, but there's a difference. It's like uh, when someone says they have OCD, when actually they mean they like tidying, uh, putting all your pens in a jar is not OCD. Um, or like lining stuff on your desk is not OCD. Going back to your house 10 times to check you locked the door and having the exact same routine every morning because otherwise you have a panic attack, that's OCD. Uh, so it's, it's a, the difference of scale, uh, not to upset anyone who has OCD. You probably didn't make it because you're checking you didn't leave the gas on. Um, so <laughs> an example, uh, an example from my own very life. So I started at Etsy in 2013. This is the lowest resolution photo. When I saw the size of this projector, I'm like, oh yeah, that's gonna work great. Um, 
back in 2013, we didn't have digital cameras, so this is scanned off of a flash bulb. Um, um, so everyone in this photo has like spoken pretty much at uh, Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, I just coming in back into security after being in operations for a period, mostly, well, entirely because I read the book Kingpin, because um, my friend re recommended it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know all these mailing lists. Uh, I know all the like, well, arachnids mailing lists where everyone would post snort signatures and you'd apply them and get false positives. Um, <laughs> apologies to anyone running snort still. Um, and so we, my first week there, uh, which is already weird because you're at Etsy and it's not a real place, um, and we have a first team meeting and everyone's going on about all these projects they're working on. I obviously don't have a project I've been working on because I've been there three days. Um, and people are talking like all the uh, CSP and that's the only one I remember and all these other things. I'm like, crap, I don't know any JavaScript uh, at all. I've never, like I think I made a blink tag once. Is that close? Um, like I have no idea about any of this other stuff. Uh, and I'm like, what? I, I've got so much to learn in my first few weeks before these people just throw me out the door. Um, um, and then like for the first at least six months, I was living under this uh, constant feeling that I was going to be discovered and fired, which uh, is extra spicy if you're a, a migrant worker in the US, because if you lose your job, you lose your visa, and you have to leave the country pretty much that day. Sometimes there's a grace period. So like being fired is like, oh, I just have to give up all my friends' country, then return to another country and start again. No pressure. Um, this is a really horrible feeling. Um, I thought I'd make the talk more polite by saying ducking, and a shout out to DuckSec. Um, and this makes it really hard to do good work because you have this extra layer of anxiety and fear and not wanting to uh, fail, so you don't try anything risky. And if you don't try anything risky, then your work is kind of can become or feel really mediocre. So you kind of get like this self-perpetuating um, loop, feedback loop of uh, making your own stuff worse so it gets harder, which makes it worse, it gets harder, which then leads to Burnout, which uh, I think some people are beginning to acknowledge might happen in the security industry. Uh, Etsy used to, be, uh, used to be named the retirement home for burnt out pen testers and consultants, because um, we had so many like ex ISEC and ex other places, um, people who were just like, yeah, I'm bored of going to the same places, doing the same things every time, and living in a hotel for two weeks. Can I just get a regular job at a place? And they're like, yeah, yeah, come, come along. We have knitting and cookies. Um, <laughs> so, what to do about it, uh, which is kind of why I'm talking, um, and also I love this. But the, like, in, in hindsight, this isn't the best slide, because now like, there's two CSOs, two managers, <laughs> so, yeah, so, fine, fine. But I didn't get fired from that place, so by their own reckoning, I was of a level to not get fired. Um, so a lot of this is the reality of yourself and the perception of yourself. Um, I th who have I stolen this from? I stolen this from someone called Bill. <laughs> um, you compare yourself against the best of everyone in your, uh, in your team and your peers to what you can do, rather than the average of what they can do. So like if you have some mind-blowing reverse engineers on your team and you're not very good at reverse engineering or even forward engineering, um, You'd be like, they're much better at reverse engineering than me. I'm useless. Like, so clearly I'm useless. And you're like, cool. Um, do they know how to like uh, do anything other than reverse engineer? Not, not really. Right. So you have all these other skills, but you only compare yourself to what they do. Um, and like, uh, which is just, it's not fair on yourself. And you wouldn't, uh, if a friend came to you with this problem, you wouldn't tell them. No, no, that's right, yeah, just compare yourself to the best of everyone in your team uh, against you, because that's a really clever thing to do. But your brain doesn't like working like that. So um, you have to have a much more kind of leveled response to it of, okay, so this person is good at this, but I'm much better at this, because this is what I do. Or if, like me, you're a jack of all trades, jack is probably a strong word, master of absolutely nothing, um, like, I'm not better than anyone in my team in pretty much anything other than dyeing my hair. Um, 
because Richo is awful at it. Um, <laughs> someone didn't get their deposit back on their uh, last place. Um, but uh, as a whole, I can do a bunch of skills at once to various levels that other people cannot do to those levels. Um, hilariously, due to being older than 35 and working for a company that does cloud, I'm one of like four people in the company who knows how to rack things, um, which is not the most groundbreaking skill, but it is when you buy some service and people are like, yeah, there's a room there. It's got fans and shit. They're like, yeah, 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 no, they do. Um, yeah, I know, what a great skill to bring to the table. And especially uh, in this delightful hemisphere, you have a tall poppy syndrome, which is a great thing to Google image search for. Um, which I think can be, as soon as anyone gets too elevated, you kindly peg them down, but that doesn't stop how you internalize it. And I don't think InfoSec is particularly good at like, bringing the egos of certain people down. Um, so now, an exciting story with beautiful clip art. So when I was back at um, the Puppet Labs in sunny Portland, Oregon, I was working with the, uh, one of the developers there. They were um, one of the, the first initial hires. They've written books on Puppet. They've done a lot of the dev work and like uh, dreaming up wild ideas that will, should never make it into production, but here it is for a demo uh, that then eventually gets sold. Um, and we were talking about OS provisioning, and he was like, so how do these machines get the IPs on them? Like, well, they just use DHCP. What's DHCP? Uh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> so you, you don't know what DHCP is? It's not what I said. I explained DHCP. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I'm like, wait, so you, have, you know so much about these things. You can program at a rate, like, I can't read as quick as you can write code. Um, and that's in Ruby. Um, so like, oh, oh, that's illuminating. Holy shit, we have different experiences. We are diff good at different things. Um, and this is the best clip art on the internet. <laughs> I could just leave this slide up for the whole thing and it would be fine because it's so good. Um, but yeah, having people from different backgrounds and uh, different experiences and like how they were taught. Uh, if you have someone who comes, comes from like a strangely games development background, uh, their versions of what optimized are will be very different to yours. If you have someone who uh, comes from, say, the banking world, their understanding of privacy will either be much or worse better than yours. <laughs> Depending on... Anyway. Um, so imposter syndrome could actually be a sign that you're about to learn awesome things. Uh, and who doesn't like learning awesome things? They're awesome. Um, and that's, uh, it could be a sign that you have a lot of knowledge to share too, because if you have things, it's like, I very rarely found people who are a superset of all my knowledge and experience and have done everything I've done and I've only done some of it. Uh, I think that would be creepy, um, but also very unlikely and I would be sorry for them. There's so much drinking. Um, so how many, was, Audience participation time, scary, I know. How many people have heard of someone getting fired due to knowing absolutely nothing? I mean, some hands, but whatever. How many people have you heard of having imposter syndrome to any degree? More than, more than one hand, right. So using maths, one of those is bigger than the other. <laughs> so using uh, threat modeling and risk analysis um, and machine learning, Probably threat intelligence. We can work out that like one of them is more common than the other. So, so maybe take that into account. Um, so why do our brains make this trade-off? Because human brains have survived quite a while. Um, they've had um, bigger adversaries than the corporate workplace, such as uh, I was going to say dinosaurs, but my education isn't that bad, despite living in America. Um, <laughs> So some of it's ego. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this in the InfoSec space. Um, I think it's a new thing they're trying to bring in. Um, like, new egos in InfoSec. Um, 
I'm just like, Google image search is my favorite thing of late. Um, this guy is a badass hacker. Because generally when you're using a computer, holding a gun is advantageous. Uh, <laughs> because then you can type with one hand and like use your nose to press return. Um, so uh, Invisic actually has attackers. Um, coders have bugs, which often they feel are attacking, or project managers, which they often feel are attacking, but not, but not the same good. Operations people have the entire world and a limited supply of alcohol. Um, but these are not like actually attacking you, despite how, I don't know, certain patch management seems. But th in Infosec, there are real um, people trying to break your shit, trying to break into stuff to steal things from you in a criminal way. Like um, other than like legal and risk ops and all those other things have actual uh, adversaries in the traditional sense. So it's actually quite high stress in that regard. There's a very clear win-lose stakes uh, like if you're Equifax, you have lost. Uh, if you are a certain four-letter word ride-sharing company, moving on. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, 100K bug bounty program, brilliant. Um, so as attackers, you win and lose, and as defenders, you win and lose, and like, it is very clear of, like, of which those are. Like, if your site gets owned and all your information is now on the public internet, that's probably viewed as losing, and the attackers probably won. Um, but if you pay them off and get them to sign an NDA, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, especially in the conference scene, there's lots of uh, posturing, um, because you have to, like, I could, uh, I really wanted to include the bit from Johnny Mnemonic where he's like, I could crash your shit from here. Um, but why give that film more credence than it has? Um, and Defcon still exists, but like, whatever. Um, but there's a lot of posturing at that of like being a badass hacker, being um, a, a, a black hat, because wearing hats indoors, like it's, it's a social faux pas, but okay. Um, just never understood that. Um, and the whole, all the talks there, like, uh, like adversarial talks get much more interest than um, defensive talks, even though there's probably more people defending in the world than attacking. Um, one of them's better paid if you're good at it. 100K bug bounty program. Um, what have I written? Oh, yeah. Um, so it, it leads to people not showing their vulnerabilities, not that kind. We've, everyone can drop O-Day. Uh, or why do people not call it one day or two day the day after? Like in reporting, when they said they used O-Day, you're like, cool, yeah, but that was yesterday. So now it's one day. It doesn't say O day forever. That's not how days work. But uh, um, and people not admitting they don't know anything uh, out of fear, out of uh, worrying about um, looking unknowledgeable, dumb, like that. Like who? Uh, you ask a question to some uh, the previous gun holding badass hacker. Um, like, oh, I don't know what that means. Are you going to get a really friendly answer, or are you going to get them laughing at you? Hmm, yeah, probably, probably, the, probably the latter. People burning out and leaving the industry. Um, I know lots of um, security people who really want to just open a bar um, because it has to be less stressful than working in defense. Um, and it also leads to infosec not being um, diverse or inclusive anyway. And I'm really impressed at this conference for it being really diverse and inclusive. So good job, New Zealand, on carrying on being really nice. <laughs> what are you, the Canada of the South? <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, so my uh, friend Scott Roberts at GitHub has written a much better blog post than mine on this, which is where I stole this quote from. Um, and like, it's just about reframing. <laughs> Uh, how you view it, if you can go, mm, maybe I'm not an imposter, maybe I'm just not a psychopath. <laughs> Which, <laughs> as any therapist will tell you, is step one on becoming a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'm just not paying mine enough. Um, and this is a really nice thing to do, which I imagine not a lot of people in the industry do. Um, but this is a really cool uh, like trick you can do for when you're having those days where Either uh, your payload isn't uh, popping a shell, or you work for Equifax, or 
you found another set of GitHub keys that led to semester cred. Never mind. Um, and another fun one, like who enjoys passwords and passphrases? There we go. Um, but a friend of mine is like, yeah, I just make them something that's really uplifting. So every time I have to type in this really long passphrase, um, I kind of feel a bit better about the horrible world. Like, oh, yeah, that's like really easy and would be really nice to not feel terrible. Um, but like, all this comes from brains, and, and brains are just a, a very primitive set of ways of not being eaten by things that slowly evol evolved in soci into society. So why, why does this happen? And um, cognitive dissonance, oh man, that's really hard to say, um, is where the, the brain kind of holds two thoughts that um, seemingly don't go together in this way. So like, I've been having imposter syndrome all my career that spanned two decades then either there's really bad hiring in the world, which there is, but that's not my point, um, or like I'm able to do this enough that like it's okay. Um, and the only other place I can actually think of this ever happening is, if anyone knows who this is, then this is Albert Hoffman, the person who discovered uh, acid um, with his cat. Um, he lived to 102 despite <laughs> discovering acid and then going, I wonder what this does. Um, so the, from accounts of which I've read, uh, when taking acid and like four hours in, you're like, uh, that wall is melting. And you're like, and I am being surrounded by aliens. And it's not because of the acid. It is just a coincidence that they happen to show up at this time. Because even though I've taken acid, it can be acid, as this is real. And like, there's similar levels from what I've read of the cognitive dissonance of, I have done this thing, and here is the evidence, but I am ignoring the evidence because it can't be the evidence. Um, or there are aliens every time you take acid. Uh, so what can you do as an organization? Not microdose. Um, <laughs> apparently, Albert Hoffman was microdosing for the last 20 years of his life, and he died at 102. <laughs> He's, uh, what a wonderful person. You have all these Silicon Valley startups going, yeah, we're microdosing. You're like, whatever, this guy was doing at 101 years old. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, so as an organization, or even as a wonderful, friendly conference, acknowledging it exists um, is actually like a reasonable first step. Uh, telling your new hires that it's OK to be unsure. Um, and like, as soon as you have someone on your team go, yeah, none of this will make sense. I promise you, eventually it will make less unsense, but that's like, we have complex systems. That's why we are working in a knowledge-based industry that is very specialized, because you can't understand all the things, because there are so many things now, and they interact in so many ways. So the idea of knowing everything is just kind of ridiculous. Um, it, GDS uh, in the UK have this tiny list that's impossible to read, even on this giant projector. But um, it's linked in the, I was going to say show notes. What the hell am I? It's uh, linked in the slides that I'll fax around afterwards. Um, <laughs> and this is, <laughs> I live in America. We still use fax. What are you on about? Um, uh, and this is saying what it's okay to say. And it's okay to say, I don't know. And if that is ingrained in your uh, work culture, uh, and that, that is welcome, and that is on a wall so it's clear, it's not like, a, a thing said in back channels, it's right there in front of you and acknowledged by everyone, uh, then that is a much easier way of going, I don't know, and that's okay, rather than, I don't know, and I must pretend, otherwise I will be fired in moments. Um, the Recurse Center, formerly Hacker School, but they changed the name so it would be harder to remember who they are. Um, they have a lot of social norms and social rules, and good old giant projector. The no feigning surprise of like, oh, you don't know something, you must do that. Like, you're not allowed to do that. Or you're encouraged not to do that there because that doesn't actually help anyone learn. It just like is, I was going to say dick waving. Uh, posturing unnecessarily, uh, dick waving. Um, no well actuallys, which, God, if the InfoSec community could do that, that'd be great. Um, no backseat driving and no subtle isms like um, racism, sexism, all those kind of things. Um, if the, every security team in, in Tear World could adopt these kind of social rules, 
I think InfoSec would be in a far better place and there'd be much less unhappiness, burnout. We'd actually be able to work together occasionally. Um, we might become a bit more inclusive. Um, DEF CON might burn to the ground. Um, guess I'm not doing this talk at DEF CON next year. Um, <laughs> as I used to work at Etsy, I have to talk about blameless postmortems. That's in my contract. Um, and the idea is, like, if something breaks, you don't point your fingers at the person who did the change. You talk to them and go, like, what was your expectation of the change? You obviously made that change going, I think this will work, or you wouldn't have done it. Um, like, no one goes into work to go and go, yeah, let's see what I can fucking break today. Um, unless you're a red teamer or, like, <laughs> <laughs> you are AFL. Um, so, like, people go, I actually want to do good at work. And, like, let's make a thing work, push button, flames come out. Oh, I didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> yeah, then you can't use Elasticsearch. Um, and that's like a much nicer way of just having a blameful culture where like, oh, thing broke while doing something really hard and technical uh, that only they were working on in really uh, high stress situation. Rather than be supportive and w learn from this, let's point our finger at them and maybe fire them. Like, mm, I don't want to work in that place. Because um, you won't learn in that environment if every time something breaks, if every time a computer did something wrong, you got fired, who would boot their Mac? Who would install Linux on their computer? Um, uh, praising others, I don't think that's generally thing, a thing we do in InfoSec all that much, um, which is a shame. Uh, Stripe has a very strong culture of being as supportive to each other as we can across teams. Etsy had uh, employees until recently. No, um, I miss Etsy, sad times. Um, Etsy had a, a very positive culture towards each other and like chatbots with plussing everyone and being generally very supportive to each other. And that's actually something small, but um, it actually makes a difference. I think at Yelp, the person who gets the most pluses every week gets, I think it's a unicorn for the week, a little plushy unicorn for the week. But that's just an acknowledgement that like everyone really enjoyed your work last week, have a unicorn. That's <laughs> all we want in life. Um, Tips for praising you, like, uh, you can make it personal to the person, but don't personalize it of, like, the same way you wouldn't call someone a dumbass for breaking something. You don't say, you're a genius for making something work. It's like, you did something really good, and, like, tell me about how that worked. I'm really impressed by this, rather than, you are obviously the second incarnation, incarnation of Albert Einstein, um, which, yeah, whatever. Um, this is uh, a contentious topic of the, the concept of yak shaving. Um, my former coworker, Seth Walker, I was gonna say green, I, I don't think I've worked with him. Um, the yak shaving is disease and it's one-upmanship. Um, and it's like, bro, I totally shaved this giant yak and there was lots of hair everywhere because it's like, there's that viewpoint or we work in complex systems. If we didn't, we'd probably be earning minimum wage. You understand how pay structure works. Um, they are complex systems and like they are intertwined. Yes, that's why we have 3,000 servers. It isn't just we like getting AWS bills. They all do something and they all interact together. Like right, unveiling one bit of code will reveal other bits of code because your computer doesn't run one bit of code anymore. You don't like type 10, some stuff in basic, 20, some stuff in basic. If you're running that as a web service, I'd love to know. Um, Although, if anyone has any, um, like, Atari basic O-Day, that would be really good. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I guess probably, again, not O-Day, like, 3,000 day. Um, but where would that get you in the headlines? Um, another example was um, a bunch of years ago, getting my security team was getting lunch with another security team. Two of their security team were... Uh, arguing over this thing. I'm being very vague in case they ever watch this. Um, and one of them said, like, well, I, I know loads about this. Uh, I basically run a conference that's about this, and then kind of sat back kind of quite, well, I've just won this round. And then the other person retorted with, yeah, this is what I did my thesis on. Um, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this seems lovely. And so at that point, I decided I never want to work with these people ever again. Um, well, not that I'd work with them, but I would never go and work with them anywhere. And I think our whole team unilaterally agreed that while the lunch was lovely, 
it's all about the people. Um, so, so don't be those people. Um, your culture can affect people in invisible ways. Like, uh, there is no convenient graph for uh, people who quit the industry because they were burnt out, or people who went to quit doing infosec and started doing like just being an, uh, a developer or ops because they found it um, a much friendlier environment. Um, I think the the developments the developer space is generally really friendly. You like. Uh, they're welcoming and they, they just love talking about the code they've written or the language they're into or the Java frame, the JavaScript framework of the week that is currently being rewritten. Um, whereas like ops people mostly congregate talking about whiskey um, and JVMs. Whereas in those people, it's like, well, this group can't talk to this group and there are lots more tiny islands and there seems to be much less people talking across to each other. Um, and that, that has uh, implications. Just don't go too far. Uh, if you've heard of Dunning-Kruger, it's the inverse of imposter syndrome um, and is never worried about by the right people. Um, the people who are like, no, no, I totally know what I'm doing and I'm brilliant at everything and I won't let you do anything. They're like, yeah, I'm just gonna go and look at whatever local job hunting website people use. I, I can't remember. Um, I think anyone who's attending a talk on imposter syndrome probably doesn't need to worry about Dunning-Kruger. Um, and if you do, I'm more than happy for that mistake to have been made on the off chance. I realized lunch is after this, so I will be rapid, because uh, everyone wants to eat. Um, be, under uh, understand be, be understand to people. Firing my editor. Stand under people like a bee. This is hard. Uh, be kind to yourself, even if you're a joke like me. So Self-care is not really a thing this industry is famed for. Um, like high-profile deaths due to um, opioids is not self-care. Um, attending Vegas in summer is not self-care. Um, going to Vegas is not self-care. Um, and seek help. There are super friendly people in the industry that are probably quite busy um, being friendly to people. Um, like therapy is a real thing. I'm English and I talk to a therapist. This is like not an anomaly. It can happen. Even like, yeah, uh, uptight English people occasionally can realize maybe I could talk to other people about things rather than just bottling it all up and becoming a US postal worker. Too soon? Um, really? <laughs> In America's history? Um, and this like, affects people differently. Um, confidence or having an error confidence often comes with having privilege. If you, uh, oh, that was clever. Um, like if you're a, a migrant worker you, and you uh, lose your job and get fired, you are not quite gonna be quite as confident as, oh, if I lose my job, I can just go back to my large trust fund that my parents gave me. Like, oh yeah, no, you're gonna be more confident because you have a lot less to lose. Why are you even having a job? I hate you, Nathaniel, etc. cetera. Um, arrogance also comes with privilege for the above kind of reasons. Um, so, you know, just don't work with those people, simple. Um, uh, as I said, yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna tweet the link to speaker deck. I keep spelling wrong. Um, there's um, a bunch of actual resources on this. There's Scott's uh, blog post, which is better than my blog post. I would say that because Scott's nicer than I am. Um, and then Blue Hackers, which is an organization on mental health in the tech community, which is very tied into the delightful effects of imposter syndrome. Um, if that sounds like an environment you'd like to work in, come and talk to me about jobs at Stripe. Isn't that a fun font? Um, and I'm a little bit early, but cool. Thank you.